let's do it. In this video, we're going to walk the cup, and then we're going to compare that to freehand with a TIG finger on plate. We'll be using this large diameter gas lens setup that's commonly used for walking the cup and an air-cooled FlexLock 360 TIG torch. We'll start off with the root pass and we'll weld it all the way out, 3 16 thick plate. Starting off at 100 amps, we'll go full pedal, which won't quite give us 100 amps. Tungsten electrode extension is really important when you're walking the cup. For both the root pass and the hot pass, I'm going to extend my electrode about 5 16 of an inch, maybe just a little bit more. Cup size is also very important. I chose a number 6 so that it will wiggle inside that bevel groove nice and easy. This is a 3 16 thick plate with 30 degree bevels, zero land, 1 8 gap. I'm using a 1 8 inch thick ER70S6 filler. The number 6 cup is working pretty good. My electrode extension is about right. I could have a little bit less and not be leaned back so far, but that is helping me film. But the main thing I'm trying to do is not wiggle very far side to side. Just a slight little wiggle just to keep things moving. If you can wiggle only a little bit and hold a tight arc, it tends to punch the root in there. You get a little bit of push through, a little bit of reinforcement on the back side instead of a real flat weld. This is somewhere between 96 and 100 amps. And that seems to be about right. It hasn't tried to keyhole out on me or anything like that. And it looks like it's going in pretty good. Here's a quick look at the back side. All right, let's do the bottom half. We'll freehand it with a TIG finger, trying to keep everything the same. Still set at 100 amps, still going to go full pedal, and that's going to give us about 97, 98 amps, something like that. There's one side of the TIG finger that has multiple layers of material, and that's the side you want to prop against the hot metal. And for this weld, it's going to slide there pretty nice. It's going to let me scoot on up there, hopefully. Now that gap has probably drawn shut just a little bit, but the ER70S6 filler, as opposed to S2, should help the root flow in there, where I get some decent reinforcement, and I break the walls down, and everything will go okay. For me, I don't notice a tremendous difference between S2 and S6 when I'm just welding a bead on plate or something like that, but an open root, an open root situation, where the backside is exposed to air and it oxidizes, the S6 seems to do a lot better. But oftentimes that is governed by a welding procedure. You have to use what the procedure calls out. Notice that I'm not going side to side at all on this freehand route. I'm only going forward and back. That's a benefit of freehanding. You don't have to go side to side. And that usually helps punch the root in, in my experience. I was on a job a long time ago and they practically insisted that you weld your root passes using that technique. Let's take a quick look at the root pass now. We'll take a closer look at it at the end when all of the passes are done. We're going to put a hot pass in it next. And oftentimes a hot pass isn't much hotter than the root. In this case I bumped it up 10 amps. Seems about right. A little bit of leeway there. I could definitely have gone a little hotter. But I'm a little rusty on this so don't know if I could handle the heat just yet. And if you go too hot and you can't motor on out, you wind up melting through, sucking back, and that's no good. So this is working okay for me right now at 110 amps. Walking the cup is one of those things that I used to do all the time as a pipe welder, but then I transitioned into a different industry, and walking the cup really wasn't done at all. But I can kind of feel it coming back. feels pretty good. I mentioned earlier I was using a FlexLock 360 torch, that's from CK, and you can see I've got the torch head kick back quite a bit. You could also do this with a flex head torch, but you wouldn't want to do it very many times. I'm trying to hold the torch rather loosely, not give a gorilla grip on it, so that I can be relaxed, and I'm also putting just a little bit of pressure on the filler rod, so that in case it wants to take a little filler, it's there. But pretty much, I'm just walking over the filler. That's the hot pass walking the cup. While it went in pretty good, I wound up being just a little bit lower than I had hoped, so I might have to put an extra pass before capping. Now we're going to do the freehand hot pass. Once again, I'm going to use the side of the TIG finger that's got the most layers on it. 
And I'm going to try to slide right on up there and make something look halfway decent. 110 amps still. Full pedal. And here we go. The motion is very similar to walking the cup. And I'm not sure exactly why, but oftentimes I can carry a little bit more metal freehanding than I can walking the cup. This looks like it's filling up just a little bit better. I should be able to cap this, this half with one more pass. That's what I'd like to do anyway, but we'll see. What I'm trying to do here is just weave it evenly and watch the toes of those weld where that metal just flows just to that line where the bevel is to leave myself a straight line to cap. Now let's go to the third pass, walking the cup. I'm switching over to a number eight cup here now that I'm out of the bevel groove. While it's still good and hot, I'm going to give it a quick run down with the wire wheel at low RPMs. And I'll get right back in there for that third pass. I can kind of tell that I'm going to need one more pass after this one. It's just barely above flush in some places and probably a little bit under in others. But that's okay. And that's why another reason why you don't want to come very far outside those bevels. I'm just barely nipping them right here. Here's another good shot of, of how far I've got that torch angle kick back, the torch head angle kick back. And that's because it's plate. If this was pipe, I wouldn't have to have a kick back quite like that. Here's the last arc shot of that third pass. I feel like if I were to get back and practice on walking the cup, I could bump it up another 10 or 20 amps and motor on out a lot quicker. But this is what I can do for right now. Let's take a quick look at it up close with a flashlight. And you can see right here, got some little low places. Not too bad. It's going to need another pass. So I'm going to go ahead and put a number 10 cup on for that last pass. I'm going to bump it up 10 amps to 120. And we'll see how that goes. Looks like it's going okay. Definitely not too hot. Definitely not something I that's out of control. And again, I'm just just watching the toes, trying to co go just a little bit wider than the, the previous weave, just a little bit. Again, I'm keeping just a little bit of pressure on that 1 8 filler wire in case it wants to take a little bit, but it, it's really not taking any extra. I'm just walking over the wire for the most part, but I don't want it to come out of the puddle. So a little bit of pressure will keep it in there. We're just about getting to the top here, just about finished with this pass. And we'll take a look at it, see how we did. Fairly uniform, definitely got enough reinforcement. That's about right. Always room for improvement. Let's go ahead and do the third pass, and it's actually going to be the final pass with the TIG finger freehanding. For some reason, I'm usually able to carry just a little bit more metal when I freehand than when I walk the cup. I'm not sure why that is. I guess it just has something to do with the freedom to move where I want to move instead of where the, the cup walks me over to. But this, this one pass is going to do the job here. So the freehand will get done in three passes total, and the walk in the cup took four. Still at 120 amps. And just like with walking the cup, I'm keeping a little bit of pressure on that filler rod just in case. And it looks like it is taking a little bit here and there. And that's probably the reason it's filling up a little bit quicker. I'm taking a little bit bigger steps, which is increasing my travel speed a little bit, which is not a bad thing. And propping right on that hot metal with that several layers of that TIG finger hanging in there pretty much as long as I want to, working like it's supposed to work. Let's get a little wire wheel on this whole thing now and take a look at the front side. We'll compare the walk in the cup to the free hand and we'll take a look at the root as well. Okay, this is the walk in the cup half, fairly uniform. And this is the free hand half using the TIG finger. Not as bad, probably doesn't look as good as the walk in the cup. The root, not much difference in the root, walk in the cup versus the free hand. It pushed through there pretty good. 
There are a lot of different uses for a TIG finger, but the main thing it allows you to do is prop practically anywhere, right next to the weld, on hot metal, aluminum, stainless steel, pipe welding. You can learn more at weldmonger.com. Thanks for watching.